since 1819, Kamehameha the Great, a staunch believer in ancient Hawaii's ways, has died. Ali'i searching the big island for his remains to harness his mana, come up empty-handed. As the saying goes, only the stars of the heavens know the resting place of Kamehameha. Kamehameha rests alone and fulfills his name because Kamehameha means the lonely one. An unstable Hawaiian kingdom looks to Kamehameha's son, Liho Liho, for guidance and finds him months after his zealot father's death, joining his mother and a woman for a meal. The woman smiles at the mother and son as they eat together and publicly break one of Hawaii's sacred laws or kapus. Onlookers stare as the trio aren't punished by the gods and the smiling woman enjoys her meal. The smiling woman was Hawaii's ambitious queen, Ka'ahumanu, and this is Legends from the Pacific. Aloha, and thank you for joining us. This is Legends from the Pacific, Episode 13, Hawaii's Ambitious Queen, Ka'ahumanu. I am Kamuela Kanashiro. This episode continues our month-long focus on Hawaii, so follow us on Twitter or Instagram and share us with your friends and family. Like our Kamehameha episode, we are again faced with conflicting facts but I'll do my best to provide you with an impartial view of what we know so you may form your own conclusions. Also, Hawaiian history contains names that might sound similar and people who share the same name, so please be aware of this during this episode. Later in this episode, your featured Hawaiian song and Hawaiian word, but first, Queen Ka'ahumanu. Ka'ahumanu's father was a Maui ali'i who gave Ka'ahumanu to Kamehameha early in his campaign to unite the Hawaiian Islands. There's conflicting accounts on their age difference, but she was much younger than Kamehameha. Ka'ahumanu was a natural in politics. She became one of Kamehameha's top advisors and Kamehameha's favorite wife. However, when Kamehameha was nearing his death, Ka'ahumanu didn't have any children. Also, Ka'ahumanu was not Kamehameha's only wife or the highest ranking. That honor went to Kamehameha's sacred wife, Keopuolani. Please don't confuse Keopuolani with Kapiolani. It should be noted that Keopuolani's grandfather was the Ali'i who had dealings with Captain James Cook, but that's a story for another time. Keopuolani's son, Liholiho was deemed heir to the Hawaiian kingdom by Liholiho's father, Kamehameha. But Liholiho was more interested in alcohol, yachts, and women than ruling the Hawaiian kingdom. When Kamehameha died, Ka'ahumanu was going to lose all of her power. But Ka'ahumanu became something like Hawaii's prime minister or Kuhina Nui. This granted Ka'ahumanu the same power as Kamehameha. Conflicting facts made it uncertain if Kamehameha ordered this or if Ka'ahumanu made it up, but Ka'ahumanu became Hawaii's Kuhina Nui. Liholiho's mother remained Hawaii's Queen Council, and Liholiho became King Kamehameha II. There'd be five Kamehamehas until the first elected king of Hawaii, Luna Lino. Please don't confuse Luna Lilo and Liholiho. Now, with Ka'ahumanu's power and the monarchy secured, Ka'ahumanu noticed something wasn't right. See, Ka'ahumanu, like many Hawaiians, saw foreigner women eating with men, and the gods didn't punish them. Ka'ahumanu began questioning the Hawaiian ways and supported other women to do the same. Ka'ahumanu befriended Keopuolani, and the two invited Liholiho to eat with them at a feast. Liho Liho begrudgingly sat beside his mother, and the three publicly ate together. 
The Hawaiians saw the three were not punished by the gods, and this began a paradigm shift for the Hawaiians. Following the feast, the kapu system was abolished, and Liholiho ordered the burning of all heiaus and ancient Hawaiian figures. Some say this helped the Hawaiians get away from their harsh kapu system. Others answer yes, but at what cost? Many feel the Hawaiians began to lose their culture and identity. Now, just take a moment to imagine what the Hawaiians were going through. Consider one day you wake up to find your belief system was proven wrong. Or maybe you're an atheist and it's revealed there is a God. How would you feel? How would you react? Would there be riots in the streets? Maybe. For another perspective, consider people's reactions when their favorite public figures, politicians, celebrities are revealed not to be who people believed they were. So the Hawaiians needed to replace the religion, and the missionaries provided a solution. See, the missionaries were spreading the word of their faith while providing a written Hawaiian language. Their religion was embraced by Ka'ahumanu and Ke'opu'olani, and the two provided this to their people. So now you have the Hawaiians moving from their traditional beliefs to Christianity, while missionaries recorded a censored version of Hawaii's cultural history. Remember, to the Hawaiians, the hula was a storehouse for their knowledge. But the hula was considered too sensual and labeled a pagan ritual, so the hula was publicly banned in Hawaii. About six years after the kapu system was abolished, there was a Hawaiian high chiefess, Kapi'olani. Now, the high chiefess, Kapi'olani, is not Queen Kapi'olani. Queen Kapi'olani shows up later and is who most places in Hawaii refer to when they mention Kapi'olani. So High Chiefess Kapi'olani embraced Christianity and wanted to show her people which religion was stronger. Armed with a Bible, High Chiefess Kapi'olani led a march to the Big Island's volcano Kilauea, where she challenged Hawaii's goddess of fire Pele. Once at Kelawea, High Chiefess Kapi'olani said a Christian prayer instead of a prayer to Pele, then walked along Kelawea's crater Hale Ma'uma'u. Kapi'olani survived Pele's wrath and inspired Alfred Lord Tennyson's poem, Kapi'olani. Returning to the political realm, since the island of Kauai voluntarily joined, there was concern that Kauai would leave and take Ni'ihau with them. Liholiho solved this by sailing one of his fancy yachts to Kauai, showed his new toy to the Kauai Ali'i, and sailed the Ali'i back to Oahu. So Liholiho kidnapped the Kauai Ali'i, placed him under house arrest, and forced him to marry Ka'ahumanu. Then, when the Kauai Ali'i died, Ka'ahumanu married one of the Ali'i's sons to quell another uprising. Liho Liho never converted to Christianity, but loved his yachts. Ship owner agent Charles Bullard said, If you want to know how religion stands on the island, I could tell you. All sects are tolerated, but the king worships the barge. After Liholiho's mother, Keopu'olani, died, the king scheduled a trip to London. However, he and his court contracted measles, and the 26-year-old king died in 1824. He and his court's bodies were transported back to Hawaii. The Hawaiian kingdom went to Liholiho's younger blood brother, Kaui Keaoli. Kaui Keaoli began his reign 48 years after Captain Cook's arrival. Since then, disease ravaged the non-inoculated Hawaiians. So when Kawikeoli addressed his kingdom, it was to a population that lost close to one-third of what it was almost 50 years previous. Oh, and by the way, Kawikeoli, he was only 11 years old. During this time, Ka'ahumanu, Hawaii's Kuhina Nui, did her best to help Hawaii. 
When Ka'ahumanu was baptized, she chose the name Elizabeth, as in Queen Elizabeth I. Ka'ahumanu strengthened foreign relations while spreading Christianity to her kingdom. It's 1832. Charles Darwin arrived in South America aboard the HMS Beagle. Andrew Jackson was re-elected president. Alice's Adventures in Wonderland author Lewis Carroll was born, and Ka'ahumanu died in Manoa on Oahu. Her remains were moved to the royal mausoleum, Mauna Ala, which means fragrant mountain. Mauna Ala is the final resting place of the house of Kamehameha and Kalakaua. But of course, Kamehameha the Great is not buried there. So was Ka'ahumanu good or bad for the Hawaiian kingdom and its people? This could make an engaging debate topic since points can be made on both sides, and the answer comes down to personal opinion. Today, Ka'ahumana remains one of the most powerful people in Hawaii's history and a vital member of the Hawaiian kingdom. Oahu's beloved Kauai Ha'o Church is considered the Westminster Abbey of Hawaii and rests where Ka'ahumanu was baptized. And you can visit the royal mausoleum Mauna Ala. The vault is strictly off limits, but I was fortunate to be allowed inside and saw the resting places of Hawaii's monarchs. The Royal Mausoleum is located near Oahu's Pali, which if you recall is one of Hawaii's most haunted places and where the Battle of Nu'uanu occurred. In fact, the Royal Mausoleum is on Nu'uanu Avenue. If you like what you heard, please give us a rating, write a review, and follow us on Twitter or Instagram and share Legends from the Pacific with your friends and family. I'd really appreciate it. Our theme song is Mystery by Tavana, courtesy of High Sessions. Sound effects were by Sound Effects Factory. Our music coordinator is Matt Duffy, a.k.a. DJ Triple Bypass. Links and show notes can be found on our website, legendsfromthepacific.com, including a link to your featured song, which is Mauna Leo by Kelii Reichel, courtesy of High Sessions. Legends from the Pacific was written, produced, and edited by me, Kamuela Kanashiro. I also wrote our original stories. Your featured Hawaiian word is vahine or wahine. Vahine means woman. An example for vahine would be my sister is a vahine. Once again, vahine is Hawaiian for woman. Thank you once again for listening. Mahalo and ahui ho. Mahi